I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, and this is the Doctor's Guide Podcast, Raw and Filtered. And once again, so delighted and honored with the amazing guests that I get to have on the show from all over the world. And today, not only from down under, but also from the west side of the country of the United States. I forget exactly where you are, Shara, but it's on the west side. So the point of the matter is this is that we get to experience a diversity of ideas, experiences, wisdom, magic, practices on this show, because ultimately, if you have a problem, and I'm guessing that you're someone that has a problem, um, being alive means that you have a problem, that you will find something that's worthwhile for you to help you navigate that health optimizing journey. And one of the things that I think is relevant for all of us today is that there's never one solution that fits all. In fact, there's not only just no one solution that can fit anybody. The truth of the matter is we need to look at all different types of modalities to be able to best navigate the world of our own health optimizing. And so that's why this platform is here, just bringing to you all the different people from all different places of the world and so that you can then decide and discern what's right for you. And the difference about what we do here is that we actually do a role play. So you get to witness yourself in that process because the truth of the matter is, is that when you're navigating the internet, I mean, you're looking at all these static, you know, websites and you can't really figure out, is this real? Is this not? Is this right for me? Is this not right for me? Besides that, many of the podcasts are that out there. They're just selling you something or they're just lecturing you something. And it's also hard to relate to many of that as well. And so through the role play, you get to experience the, the journey that an individual is undertaking to help them figure out what they need to do so that they can resolve and let go of whatever it is that needs to happen. So we do that through role playing. It's going to be about a six, for minute, eight to, six to eight minute role play today where one person has the problem, the other is the guide. There's maybe something personal that they have, maybe something that they've uh, experienced with other people, whatever that is. Um, most important is be uh, do not judge on any of this, because if you're judging this, then you won't see the magic and the opportunity lies for yourself. And oftentimes, judgment is a defense, and maybe you're going to get triggered. And sometimes I do hope you get triggered, because that's a message from the deep telling you, you have your work to do. So tune in, listen in, witness yourself, or perhaps somebody else that you care about, that you can send them to watch this podcast and help them with the gift of health optimizing. So for today, uh, after each of them introduces themselves, uh, we'll do the role play. We'll unpack it for another 10 or 15 minutes so that you can leave with some sort of insight and action step that you can take. But today is of particular interest to me because Una is going to present something that some people might be scratching their heads and thinking to themselves, you know, is this real? And look, I come from the academic field, um, a scientist. I trained for 17 years in the medical field, been in practice as a plastic and reconstructive surgeon for 25 years. And what Una is going to share with us today is very real. I've experienced it myself. So please, um, Una, introduce yourself just briefly. We'll have Reverend Shara introduce herself, and then we'll go into the role play. Thank you. Yes, uh, I go by Unabella and also by the Cosmic Mermaid. So I actually am uh, an artist and I went to school in Colorado and became an art teacher for many years in Colorado, but ultimately learned the most traveling around the world, ended up in Costa Rica, uh, getting my yoga teacher training, and I started a retreat organizing business. Um, about 10, 10, 12 years ago. So I've been running retreats internationally for the last 10 years. And one of those retreats took me here to Australia, which just so happens to be my Neptune line. And I jokingly say I got marooned here in Byron Bay in 2020. And that's really when the Cosmic Mermaid was fully born. And I started to do astrology readings more on a full-time basis. So I'll just say one more thing about astrology. Well, I could talk forever about it, actually. But um, as above, so below, you know, is one of the statements we could use to think about it. 
Um, but also the way that I see astrology, it's a language tool and it's a study of the cycles of the planets and the planetary bodies. And it's also, it's not some esoteric thing that's like, oh, this astrology thing in the sky. When you really begin to understand astrology, you can have a real present time connection and relationship to the planets, to the stars. And when you begin to do that, you know, it's much like the moon has an effect on the tides. You can begin to understand how these planetary bodies and the cycles they go through can have an effect on your life. So, so let me let me translate that for a moment. And and I just I'm just making up this translation. So you may like it or not. Okay. You, know, you can you can challenge me afterwards after the role play on this one. But think of it this way: everything's energy. And so we've evolved over millions of years and whatever it is that you want to think. And so the truth of the matter is all these planetary systems, it, they they are connected in some form energetically and they're impacting everything else. And so the way that these planet forms and the galaxies are rotating throughout the universe is consistent. And so therefore, they're the, what we, we can look at in the form of patterns. And so with patterns, you know, how people behave, I think that's a pattern too. So it's an interesting perspective of how, you know, we can get this information of the patterns of the solar system as it also affects our behavior. And so we could go an absolute deep dive on that one, but that's not the purpose for today. Uh, we're going to do a role play, which is very exciting. I have my own astro cartographer, and it was absolutely brilliant what I got to hear from them. So you are absolutely brilliant, Luna. Reverend Shara, uh, yes. please introduce yourself, and then we'll jump into the role play. I am an intuitive coach combining psychic readings and coaching, and I also combine astrology. I find astrology really amazing for prediction, you know, predicting love, predicting career, so many things. And um, yeah, the cycles that are happening throughout our lifespan and when's the best time to launch something. So it's really, really amazing. I My main offering is my life transformation program, which people will never be the same after they start the program. Because the change happens at an ecological or cellular level. I also do women empowerment retreats. I do body healing, healing people in the physical pain. And I've written, I've been an author and many DVDs and CDs on health and healing. Awesome. Uh, and you're amazing also because you come from the two worlds, well, the scientific and let's call it maybe it's non-scientific. I you come will. from a medical background. That's right. right. 25 years working in the medical field and from a family of physicians. And so, so no one better than I, I combine the practical into all of my work. So the practical, the metaphysical have merged, merged with me. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a beautiful thing. And as some of the greatest metaphysical uh, teachers of ours are also started off as, you know, uh, NASA physicists and also kind of sort of doing the same thing, combining the two worlds and really um, enabling us to get access to major shifts. All right. Well, again, uh, we could go on forever for that one. So let's do the role play. Um, Shara, you got a challenge and Una is going to help resolve that. Okay. Six, six or eight minutes for that one. Okay. Well, Una, you could go ahead and bring up my chart. She's going to put it on screen share and I'm going to pretend like I'm a, her typical client where I want to know what's in the cards for me in the next few months. Okay, the upcoming uh, forecast, if you will, yeah. So let me yeah. go ahead, I'll share my screen. And what I'm bringing up now is Shara's birth chart. So she was born July 30th, 1019 AM in Flint, Michigan. And so what hey, this- uh, Una, is Una, just by the oh. way, sometimes this is only audio. So if you need okay. to make a yep. reference to the, uh, just the listeners, uh, please sure. do that. Um, um, but it's also on video. So uh, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, that's okay. So this is her exact moment that she was born. And that's what the birth chart is. It takes a snapshot of the solar system. The moment you take your first breath. And this is the key or the cosmic blueprint that each individual has that if you begin to study that 
you can understand your cosmic blueprint. And most people who have lived their lives into their 40s and 50s, that when I talk to them about their cosmic blueprint, you know, we may spend 40 minutes on understanding it. It's a lot of confirmation around who they already know themselves to be, right? So um, that's the cosmic blueprint that we're looking at. And this is the symbols. So we know that Shara here is a Leo sun and she has a Scorpio moon. And she also has a Libra rising. So the rising sign is the sign that was ascending in the eastern sky at the time that you were born. And that is a very important aspect of your chart and understanding, especially around forecasting and transits. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull up the current transit. So I added a secondary wheel. And these are the transits of the planets as they are in the sky in this exact moment on April 12, 2024. And we can see that the moon's in Gemini and we have a lot of planets in Aries and we have a lot of planets in Pisces at this time. So Shara, in looking at your upcoming transits and forecasts, there's a couple of things I'm really paying attention to in uh, 2024. One is that we just had a <clears throat> total solar eclipse in Aries, which is your seventh house of partnerships or relationship. And so I would be imagining that you would be having some energy occurring in your most intimate partnerships or relationships or business partnerships um, some type of a change or a shift around something in your relationship. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're yeah. about to move actually. <laughs> okay. So there I might mean, be- Our dynamic has shifted a little bit recently. Yeah. There might be some type of relationship, like dynamic shift that might be occurring over the next six months with you and your your husband and your home zone. So that's something to be- uh, paying attention to. Um, then I'm looking also at where Saturn is. Saturn is where we have constriction or we need to learn lessons or discipline. And because that's in your sixth house of health and work, I would be cautioning you to really pay close attention to um, your physical health and well-being and your daily structures and the daily habits that you have. So have you noticed anything coming up around your, your health lately or, um, I've, I've had more colds in the past few months than I, you know, I'm usually really strong immune system will never get sick. And actually I'm just getting yeah. over cold right now, to be honest. Yeah. So when Saturn is in the sixth house, we really want to make sure that we take care of the body and not brush things off. And if something comes up, you know, go to the doctor and the best way to really, you know, work with this is again, making sure that every single day you're having discipline and structure around the basic things that you need to do in order to take care of your body so that you can have a productive, easy life. Does that make sense? Totally. You know, I just realized that Pluto next month, um, and, and I know, uh, people listening may not know what the glyphs mean. <laughs> that little uh, symbol right here, you could point to Pluto is um, it's about to trine my ascendant. Trine means 120 degrees, which is a positive aspect. How do you interpret that one? Yes. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> good question. Yes. So Pluto is a, a larger planet, meaning it has a larger cycle. It has a 250 year um, cycle. So when we experience Pluto transits, these are transits that are usually once in a lifetime transits, and they're transits that take a little bit of a longer time frame to experience and to integrate. Um, so when Pluto, the planet of, um, I call it transformation, power, and everything intense basically comes with Pluto, the god of the underworld, if you will. Trines to your ascendant. Your ascendant is really your 
self-identity and how you put yourself forward into the world, when um, Pluto aspects this, you may have a burst of energy or power around how you feel about yourself, or you maybe are in amidst a change in transforming how your identity or how you present yourself to the world. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. So that's that. And then the other thing that I'm really looking at in uh, the astrology of 2024 is we have uh, something here, uh, Jupiter, Uranus conjunction in Taurus, which happens every 14 years, those two planets come together, but it's been a while since they've been in the, in the sign of Taurus. Jupiter is the planet where, where it's transiting, will find abundance or luck or joy or opportunity. And Uranus, where it's transiting, is the unpredictable planet where we find surprises or um, unexpected changes and shifts. Now, these are coming together in your eighth house, and that is the house of sex, death, other people's money, taxes, intimacy with your um, intimate partners, um, and anything psychological, taboo, or metaphysical. So I would be um, looking out for opportunities, anything that has to do with investing, uh, anything that has to do with um, the IRS or taxes or anything like that. There could be an unexpected windfall <laughs> coming or there could be an unexpected bill coming. Is anything like that coming up for you? Yeah, I actually just shared with Una that the IRS came after us. Ah, and I've been actually following this Jupiter Uranus transit, watching the stock market. So big shifts expected this month, especially oh. towards the 20th. The 20th is Saturday, uh, April 20th is Saturday. So I would expect it the week before, uh, actually the whole month, lots of shift. Okay, you got a minute left uh, Una, to wrap it up. That, that's all. I mean, the, the other thing I will say is coming in June, uh, Jupiter will move into your ninth house. So that's a full year that you'll have Jupiter in your ninth house. So that would mean a year of expansion around teaching international travel or publishing. So if you have international teaching or publishing opportunities, the next year from June, 2024 to 2025 is a great time to be diving into those. Things. Oh, can I, can I put out my plea for, to find a publisher who wants to publish my oh. book? There you go. This could be the year. Jupiter in your night. You mentioned it. Great. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that was great, guys. Um, so my first question for you, uh, um, Shara, what was that all about for you? Give us that context. And uh, you want to stop sharing for us, Una? Sure. Yep. I so love I love Una reading my chart. Um, she's been one of my teachers. And I think that um, it's so insightful. It's helped me in so many ways just to predict and to know when you're having like a really awful day. It's like, oh, it's a, it's because of the stars. It's not because, you know, something's wrong with me, especially when we have really heavy transits. And I just feel like I'm never going to get out from under this. Like I'm just a bad person or, you know, the old beliefs come back Then I could see how long it's likely to last. And I could plan myself accordingly. Although it's not like you don't want to plan your life around astrology. I'm not saying that at all. Yeah, what's interesting, by the way, I mean, some people think, oh man, are we losing freedom? Is this going to predict, you know, things that we don't want to know about? The truth of the matter is it gives us a better insight of what our future is and what it is and how we can best plan for it. And so it actually gives you more freedom rather than less. Uh, Una, give us a little context uh, about what you just did. And what was that all about for you? You know, this is what I do. I, I typically give readings anywhere between 30 minutes, an hour, 90 minutes. And we, we di deep dive into the themes that are coming up in a person's chart. And we really look at where in their life the, the, the current transits are hitting and how they're aspecting certain um, parts of their birth chart. And I find just a wealth of information and opportunity when you begin to study astrology, um, it is one of those things that if you kind of know certain things, you can understand. Um, as an example, astrologers have been talking about the year 2020 for years. And when we were all told, oh, yeah, two weeks to flatten the curve or whatever, we saw that Saturn, the planet of restriction, 
was moving into the sign of Aquarius of people. And we knew this is more likely going to be around a two and a two and a half year restriction in 2020, which was actually what happened. So at that time, I was able to make decisions knowing the um, astrology and the cycles that were occurring. Right. I we, we knew that wasn't a two week thing, you know, so yeah. Yeah. And again, it, it's about, you know, having an educated uh, perspective of what's happening in your life, you know, whether it's, you know, through lab testing, whether it's, you know, with the help of an intuitive or whether it's, you know, the astral cartography. And, and clearly there's a lot of science and math behind all of this. It's not like somebody just drummed up a, 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 an algorithm and this is all real stuff. And, and once again, I mean, not everyone is, is ready for this. Um, but when, when you are, and some people that I have and the absolute admiration for, you know, use this constantly and it has proven to be very valuable for, for, for them as well. And so definitely it's worthwhile investigating. Once again, obviously you're going to have to find somebody that's as qualified as Una. Uh, clearly there's some people that might want to make some things up and we see that everywhere in any kind of pro profession. They're not coming from a place of integrity, but if if you got your um, sensory acuity, you know, open up enough, you'll be able to detect, you know, somebody's real or not. Um, but Una, what else would you like to share in regards to the work that you do that can help people, you know, find the right person or at least find the right uh, path towards learning more about this so that it can support them in their own personal journey? Absolutely. Um so there's so much in uh, astrology has sort of gone through a, a little mini boom lately. Um, and it's really incredible the amount of uh, um, really high quality astrological content that's being put out there um, at this time. So I'm a big fan of astrology podcasts and I listen to the astrology hub and the astrology podcasts, which are pretty heady. Uh, astrology podcast, but I would I would definitely check those out if you want to learn more about astrology. Um, but in terms of you know getting in touch with your own chart, you know it's very simple to go on to like an astro.com and just run your own chart. And like I said, astrology is a language. So if you can begin to understand what the symbols mean and you know begin to decipher them and an astrologer is really an interpreter of the language of the stars. So if you want to begin to learn this language, you know, you can start very simply by downloading your own birth chart and beginning to understand what are these symbols and what are the meanings behind them. And that's really the first place is to begin to, you know, discover it in yourself. My teacher calls it being an existential detective, you know, and there's really crucial times in people's lives when certain cycles are occurring that you can look back, you know, around 1718, we have our first nodal return. And that really tends to push us onto our karmic path. And then around 2830, a lot of people have heard this. We've had something called your Saturn return. And again, this is when you really have to take full responsibility for your life and grow up fully and become an adult. And so there's certain things that happen throughout our lives at certain times that we can look at look back. And in fact, to be a good astrologer is actually to be a good historian. And again, right. you can do that in the world that's called mundane astrology, or you can do that in your own life, this existential detectiving. But I use astrology with clients all the time, anything from, you know, when's a good time to launch something in their business? When are they going to, you know, fall in love or who should they be with? to where could they move using astro locality. Um, you know, there's the really the sky's the limit with it. Yeah, I love that. No, well, thank you for that uh, enlightenment. Uh, Shara, is there anything else you want to add to that? A ditto to everything she said. I also feel like um, I've heard 2025 is the year of the astrologer. And I, I do believe that people are going to be like looking to this, <laughs> this extra piece of information that we have. It's available. It's amazing to just know these things. And yes, even though the planets are aligned a certain way, we still have the full, um, uh, it's up to us how we play the pawns of the chessboard. And at the same time, I also want to say that, um, 
uh, Una's Una's actually, there's some astrologers that are so renowned and so out there that they don't actually even do one-on-one readings anymore. So, you know, rather than going to the most renowned or most famous, I think Una, she's got reasonable prices and, you know, it's just, she's very personable. So I'm just kind of putting out a little boot for her to, to call her up. She's really accessible. I mean, she's, she has a schedule, but you know, (laughs) I just, uh, she's, she's, She's been a great, a great astrologer for myself and other clients that I know. Oh, thank you, Shara. I just will just respond to that. I absolutely love having these one-to-one conversations with people and getting into some of the deeper implications of what is their life path. And really? yes, I'll even say fate, fortune, and free will, because those are all included in, in astrology. And I do see it similarly, like when we're born, we're dealt a hand, yes. you know, and, and these are the hand, the cards that we get. And that's what the cosmic blueprint is. That's what your chart is. Yes. But it is ultimately up to us how we play that hand and how we That's what I was it. trying to say. Thank you for that. So I try to make this thing, these symbols and these planets, I try to make that really relatable in a reading so you can really understand what it means for you in your life. And I love having these, I call them deep soul stories and, you know, spirit chats because that's really to be a good astrologer, you really have to use intuition. It's not just reading, okay, this is what the, this planet means when it's conjunct or uh, aspecting a different one, you know, to, you have to really use your intuition about how that might impact a person and suggestions. And also it's a, also an art with how you uh, instruct or advise somebody what to do with it. Like Mercury, your learning style, you know, um, there's so much, I wish I knew what I knew about my learning style because the best way for me to learn is not book learning or not the way that we learned in school. So I wish that my teachers knew or more of that information was out there. No, I totally appreciate that. And so said differently, it's the language and the math to design your future. Um, So with that, um, Una, uh, how do people get a hold of you and final words from you? Yep. I'm on socials as the Cosmic Mermaid Astrology. I also have the CosmicMermaid.com and I have two other websites. I'm a Gemini moon. I got a lot going on, but I also have a retreat business at BellaRetreats.com. I'm also an artist at UnaParadox.com. So I would love to connect with you. Feel free to reach out on any of the platforms. I usually get all my messages. So I would love to hear from anybody who wants to know more. Awesome. Thank you for that, Shara. Uh, how do people get a hold of you and any final thoughts? My website, sharaogin.com. That's S-H-A-R-A-O-G-I-N.com. YouTube is my main social media. I have a whole bunch of free resources and I have about 10 products on Amazon, such as this book. Thank you. Awesome. Well, this was absolutely delightful. It's uh, one of the uh, first time we've done this. Um, talking about our astral charts and it's the cosmic language and math to design your future. So I want to thank you both. Uh, So appreciative of you. And, you know, as they both have shared with us, you know, it's all about putting your puzzle together, you know, taking, getting access to all sorts of different items, uh, languages, perspectives, insights, all of that so that you can best design your future in the best possible way. And that's the purpose of this podcast, having real conversations. You might like it, you might not like it, but the truth of the matter is, is that this is very real for many people, so why not make it real for you too? I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, and this is the Doctor's Guide Podcast, raw and unfiltered, and we will be back. Thank you so much. Sweet. Great. Good job, everybody. All right, Thank Una. You. So with you, <laughs> what did you like best about the about it this time? Yeah, that was fun. Hey, um, <clears throat> I could talk about astrology forever. So, you know, I tried to keep it succinct and um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> what else to say. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, Shara? You know, I'll say ditto. I love talking about astrology. Yeah, yeah we can go on and on. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you both. Um, this was delightful. Um, you know, the purpose yeah. here is to uh, have this platform be one of the top 10 in social media within the next three years. And it's not because of me. It's because of you. 
Um, so, and the, and the format being so different is also so much more relatable to people. And that's, what's exciting about it. Uh, the other cool part that I'm, that I'm giving you guys is that I bring you into my, my fold, my ecosystem with other high vibration people where you are able to connect with them, collaborate, help them, support them, get support, whatever that is. Uh, there's no agenda except for being respectful and having fun. Um, and we will be building a social media platform to incorporate all of that right now. We're just using Telegram. Um, but I also highlight you know, on my website. So uh, what I would need from you is a headshot and then a bio, any links, anything else you want to share, um, all that. You and got then, my, right? I, I emailed yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then um, down the road, there'll be a lot of opportunities for other gatherings um which is gonna be super fun where we're gonna have more like 10 or 15 people where you get to talk about all sorts of things you know once again you know being that guy for other people to understand what's available for them um i do want to do one last thing um one thing that i just started today is i want to actually highlight you on social media and so i want to do like a quick minute uh talk right now and um and then ask each of you just to say something that's amazing uh, let's do, yeah, amazing about yourself or that you want people to know. And then I love the fact that you also edified each other. So I encourage you to do that as well. So um, I'm going to do that right now. Okay. So I'm I'm like saying what I'm bringing like in so the whatever top. Whatever is present. So the idea right. is uh, these are short, like one, a minute, one a minute and a half uh, blurps that I get to put on social media on TikTok, all that stuff. And okay. it's just to kind of highlight you guys. All right. You can go Let's first. Start. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. I'll start. Oh, okay. All right. I'll start. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll let each of you go. So um, who's going to go first? Is that you, Una? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, once again, a great show with these amazing people, um, an intuitive and an astro cartographer. It's the stuff that you want to know, and you're only getting it on the Doctor's Guide podcast, raw and unfiltered. So definitely tune in to learn more how you can optimize you. And first of all, thank you, Una. You're an absolute gem, a star. You're, you're totally cosmic, if you will, because what you do is absolutely amazing. And you give us insight as to what our future can be. Remarkable. Um, what say you? What do you want to share with the, the audience right now so that they have a reason to tune into the podcast? Thanks so much for having me. Uh, again, I'm Una the Cosmic Mermaid, and I live on my Neptune line in Byron Bay, Australia. So I do all things Neptunian down here. Painting, dancing, astrology, beaching, and just being that cosmic mermaid. <laughs> and you do so much more. You've got retreats, all sorts of things. And you really help people die, uh, find their divine world in the best possible way. Reverend Shara, I've known you for quite some time, all the way back from Burning Man. You're amazing. You come from two worlds just like me. And the truth of the matter is, is that you're an amazing intuitive, but you have so much more that you offer people. I am so grateful that you're on this platform and what it is that you get to share on this podcast. So uh, what say you today? Well, I think one of my main gifts is seeing people deeper than they've ever been seen before. I could see into the subconscious. That's my sacred sauce is I could see what's blocking somebody from finding love or personal fulfillment or, you know, that thing that is like that block on you having what you want. I have a special ability to, to get in there and I really love to connect with people. And I felt really honored that people actually allow me into this really vulnerable space when they do. So, and thank you for this opportunity today where I shared some inner child healing is one of my approaches to help to heal and change the cellular imprints of some of the limiting beliefs and thoughts that we have to this day. And that was an amazing, beautiful session, you know, helping the inner child come out and play and be free from all the things that prevented it from being free because of the traumas of the past. You guys are amazing. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And stay tuned in to the Doctor's Guide podcast, Raw and Filtered. It's on Spotify. It's on iHeart. It's on Amazon, iTunes, a whole bunch of places. Also on Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever. Um, but tune in because you deserve to know the process by which you can make better decisions for yourself, 
when it comes to your health, or maybe it's somebody else that you care about. Thank you, and we will see you soon.